And we're on. Look at that. Lads, how are we doing? Big welcome to everyone watching this on YouTube live and Facebook live on Rugby Pass. It's Lions. It's Lions, lads. It is. I'm Jim Hamilton, former Scotland rugby great, my uncle David once said, as the lads probably nod in agreement. But welcome to Fan Zone, the Lions edition. It's obviously a big day. I'll be taking us through this. Keep the comments coming in. Um, we've obviously got a bit of time before the captain gets announced at 10 past 12, just before... And yes, John Smith, it is the bloody boys. It is the lads on here. So humbly, lads, I put my Leicester shirt on the back wall because just in case something happens today with my good self, it's like I want to just be grounded back to my roots. Stevie, I'm going to come to you first. <laughs> what is that on the back? What I've never seen one of them before. Oh, I know. No, Jim, that's my uh, my changing room plaque. Uh, just above the jersey, got the jersey signed back in 2009. So uh, good times, brings back good memories. I've actually replaced this one. There was a, a terrible picture up there before, but just for this specific fan zone, Jim, I thought I would bring out the big jersey, the big shirt, and get it up on the wall. So um, yeah, no, that's the Lions jersey from the tour in 2009, Jim. Well, rightly so. So we can talk about the um, the excitement around being picked and been able to put your jersey on the wall and being one of the the not many men that have managed to put on the red jersey. So, uh, lads, we'll talk a bit about the excitement. Genuinely, I was excited last night going to bed and then you wake up with all your mates on WhatsApp sending what they think is a leaked Lion squad. Uh, Goody, you like a little bit on Twitter, a bit of sharing. You, I think you might have even sent me the team. Um, there's a lot of debate out there. Why is it so exciting? Well, it is. Every four years um, for the players, it comes around. Uh, firstly, Stevie Ferris, there's no way that you had a shocking picture up there and swapped it in. <laughs> You've always got your Lions jersey up. I know that. I've chatted to you on FaceTime before and seen it there. So that's the first lie we've had. Uh, yeah, mate, it's massively exciting, isn't it? You know, the world we're living in now, The what's been going on with the pandemic and is the tour on? Is it off? Is it going to be postponed? Is it in South Africa? Is it in the UK? Who knows? Everything's built up to today and Jason Leonard calling out the 36 names, starting with the skipper. Everyone's got an opinion on it because we're all sat at home. We can't go to, well, we haven't been able to go to the pubs to chat about it. So, um, yeah, it's down to us experts to come out with what we think is is right for the Lions tour. But there's only one expert that counts and that's Big Warren G. Well, I reckon is. that's a tough job for Jason Leonard to read out all those names without making a mistake. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, it's well, so simple. We'll see if there are Nova's in there. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Do I phantom? Well, we'll see if he's on there, Shanks. But genuinely, there's a bit of excitement. I don't know why. I, I mean, it comes around every four years. Um, as we've spoken about before, we've had a bit of a laugh. I've been in changing rooms where I was close to going. In 2017, there was no chance of going. <laughs> Goody's like, really? Um, but there is a real excitement. Ha look, I'll come to you first, Shanks, because surprisingly, mm. you, you've been in this situation in 2005, and you tell me 2009 as well. Um, what is the excitement like in the build-up to it? How are these lads going to be feeling? If we're waking up and we're excited, how are these lads mm. feeling right now? Well, first of all, I went to bed last night and I was super angry because the teams went up and I just got abused. got completely abused because I don't think I had Hamish Watson in there. Um, it's like line of duty. You know, you can't criticise it. Otherwise, everyone jumps on your back. But it was, 2005, right, was different because it wasn't announced like it like it is now on Sky Sports News, you know, we didn't really know exact time it was going to be announced. Um, it was, we found out on the radio, actually. Uh, Dan Barr, who was fitness coach, uh, was listening to the radio. We were just having food after training, between training, and he just came over then to myself, Martin Williams, and Gethin Jenkins with a massive cigar. He said, well done, boys, you've been selected. <laughs> <laughs> so thanks so much. <laughs> Took me about an hour to finish it. <laughs> Long, my lungs have gone after that. But then in 09 was completely different, wasn't it, Stevie? I mean, no one knew. I and mean, people say, like, you must have known, you must have gone inkling. Not a clue. You know, you hope you've done enough. Um, you think you've done enough, but until you read 
your name out on the screen, you've got absolutely no idea. I, I watched it at home on Sky Sports News, and luckily the backs went first. Um, and your name comes out, and that's it. I couldn't tell you anyone else selected. You're literally just waiting for your name. Um, and the relief after it was incredible. And it's, it's a brilliant way to do it. It's such a it's such a good way to do it for everyone. Um, but it's really nervous. You really are nervous. Yeah, Stevie, there's a really romance around it, isn't there, around the Lions tour. And again, we've spoken about it. If I had a Lions jersey, I'd, I'd put it on any wall that I was in. I'd move it around any room that I was in in the house because it is such a special club to be a part of. I mean, you'll get some of the lads obviously being announced today that are shoo-ins, like Maru Otoji um, being one of them. Obviously, Alan Wynne-Jones, we know, is a shoo-in. Just, just to name two, were you a shoo-in in 2009 or was it a kind of... Uh, sit and wait were you were you as nervous as some of these lads might be now i think jim because you know ireland won the grand slam in 2009 it made it a lot easier for mm. some of the selections from the irish squad for sure playing in the back row i started all five games and i went off i, I know i went off injured early in, in in the game against wales but um i thought it played reasonably well but as shanks uh referenced alluded to there like i was standing outside at ulster training with a ball in my hands underneath the post. I actually didn't watch it live on Sky Sports News. Um, and Johnny Davis, who's the former SNC coach of Ulster, he came out and he just went, you're in, big man. And it was just like, you know, the nerves just went. But at the same time, Jim, there's been the disappointment for somebody like Rory Best, who was probably in the mixer at that time, and he didn't get selected on the tour. So, yeah, it was, uh, for me personally, it was a massive high. And, um, you know, Shanks will be able to back me up on this. We're excited talking about it. Jim, you're massively excited talking about it, Goody. But when you actually play for the Lions and are part of that squad, you really know how special it is. And, um, you know, looking back in 2009, it was the career highlight. It was the pinnacle of rugby, not representing only yourself, your family, your friends, um, your province, your club, your country, but the whole British and Irish Isles and every player that's went before you wearing that famous red jersey. So, you know, there's so much excitement, so much build up for this this afternoon, Jim. And I certainly cannot wait for it. Goody, so there's loads of interaction coming through. Now, Andrew, we've spoken about this many times. Could have, should have, would have. I think you were back in 2005 where you played against Say. Well, you tell the story. It's important to me to, because if I tell the story, it's probably very different to how you'll tell the story. So, how close were you to going? Well, 2005, uh, the uh, disastrous tour that Tom Shanklin went on with Sir Clive Woodward, where there were two teams, one in the North Island, one in the South Island, New Zealand. Um, Narrow lost that. <laughs> narrow, <laughs> narrow. Yeah, I mean, we, I, was at, I was at Leicester at the time, uh, obviously for England and the Six Nations, uh, mainly because there were about 14 other fly halves at the end at the time. Um, but I remember we played Sale on the Saturday uh, and we absolutely dominated them, beat them by 40 points. Um, I'd scored a, a try, loads of kicks, played really well. And Jordan Murphy, who was one of my best mates, came up to me after the game. Literally, we got back in the changing room and it was the week. So it was the weekend before the, the Lions scored on, on a Monday. And there were Lions selectors at the game and Jordan came up to me and he's like, we all knew the selectors were there. So you're on a high. You're thinking, I couldn't have done any more. Um, Jordan's come in after the, after the game and said to me, Goody, I think you've just played yourself onto the plane to New Zealand. And I was like, I reckon. He goes, yeah, mate, you honestly, you had a storm on got man of the match all this stuff and then i've convinced myself over the weekend that i've got a chance and as shank said it was announced over the radio that was the only way it was done back then i've got in my car and gone for a drive and i've got it on the radio listen to it and it goes in alphabetical order they skip past a g that i was not on there <laughs> and i thought right i'm going straight to the pub to um have a couple of beers to try and drown my sorrows so that's as close as i came uh, i was on standby um and you know, 2009 was very similar i played in the six nations um on standby again for that, but uh, obviously there were world-class fly halves in the squad. Uh, the only thing I will say about the 09 tour and Stevie Ferris, um, you know, you'll be part of this and people remember it. I know Stevie got injured, but Ron Nogara put the high kick up and then chased it. Had I been playing and put the same kick up, there was no way I'd have made that tackle. <laughs> too slow. So maybe the Lions should have picked me um, and they might have won that series. So uh, yeah, anyway, it was, it was um, so close yet so far. Um, the boys below, obviously Shanks and, and Stevie Ferris have had the privilege. Um, and it's really heartbreaking for a lot of players, and it will be today again, that don't make the squad. Um, there's a number of players that will be their second or potentially third tour. Um, and for people like myself and you, Jim, who thought we got close, we probably never did, did we? 
Well, I don't know. I, I mean, one of the lads just popped up on screen there with a message saying they should take me for the banter. I agree. Anyway, anyway, I mean, this is my last chance saloon, right? Because I'm still in my 30s, so I'm 37. Next time, four years' time, I'll be in my 40s, so it would be long gone. Stevie, they'll, there's a lot of talk, right, around the Six Nations and forming the Six Nations, and this is where we can maybe talk about our bolters, and we'll talk about this man. Uh, Sam Simmons, there was a really good uh, interview done with him and we'll show the video and then we can maybe talk about uh, what kind of chance Sam Simmons has got. So if we play the video of Sam Simmons and what was said at the press conference and then we can piggyback that. I was very surprised because Warren Gatlin never spoke to me at any point. Have you had any conversations with Warren this season? Has he got in contact with you just to, to let you know you've been on, you've been on his radar? In, in the past, um, early, early uh, in the year, um, we, we literally had a brief chat just to just to mention that um, just because I wasn't playing in the Six Nations, um, not to worry about that. Uh, keep playing well for, for club, um, keep my form up. And uh, this was actually before the, the tour to South Africa was confirmed. Um, he said, you know, if you keep doing what you're doing, um, then if there is a tour in the summer, then we'll see what happens. So it was quite nice to, to get that reassurance, even if nothing comes from it. At least I know that... Um, you know, I'm performing well and even though I'm not um, playing international rugby, I'm kind of getting the same chance as other boys that are. Did you receive that letter? It sounds like, sounds like you did. Yeah, I went uh, out to quite a few, quite a few boys. Um, I'm, not, I'm not actually sure how many people got it, but um, just be it saying you are being considered um, for the tour, whether you're in or you're not. So I think it is, it is literally speaking to other boys, Cuffy, Knowles, he is literally on the day that it comes out on like Sky News or something like that. That is when you find out. Um, so it's quite cool. I guess it's quite cool that way. Stevie, fair play to the journo for pushing him on that. And, you know, let's not forget Sam Simmons didn't play in the Six Nations. Eddie Jones is not a fan of his at all. Obviously, European Player of the Year last year. I've, I've heard all three of us talk about him. As a, as a, firstly, as a man in the back row, all three of you have picked Sam Simmons as a bolter. Mm. I haven't because I'm a belter. But he's obviously got he's got he's got a ch he's got a chance of going right. And if you if you know you start to hear whispers, but Stevie, I'll come to you. He didn't play in the Six Nations, so how can the coaches look at Sam Simmons as a potential option? I know Billy Vanapola has not played well. Kaylin Doris as well, who's my old Doris, an unbelievable player who's now, um, well, he, he looks to be back fit soon. But what do you make of Sam Simmons as you picked him as one of your bolters? Yeah, well, well first of all, what a, what a brilliant athlete he is. Um, so explosive, powerful, you know, rapid, uh, reads the game very well, dominant on both sides of the ball, ball in hand and in defence. He's very good over the ball as well. Um, you know, as, as a number eight, he's been fairly durable for... For, for, for Exeter, he's playing consistently well, and that's why I think he's got a chance. Now, Goody has been banging the Sam Simmons drum for the last 18 months, two years, and I'm not sure if, because he's not getting selected for England, that there's even more hype that builds up. I think if he was playing for England, and he was playing just okay, I'm not sure there'd be the same amount of people banging this, banging this, the, the Sam Simmons drum to get him onto the Lions tour. And it's a wee bit like John Cooney, Jim, isn't it? You know, there's been more and more said about him because he isn't playing international rugby. But personally, I feel like he deserves to go. He's been probably one of the standout number eights. I would have him on my side. More athletes, the better. As South Africa showed in the 2019 Rugby World Cup, they're littered with athletes, big men, explosive, powerful guys. And Sam Simmons brings that in buckets full. Shanks, let's have a look at some of your selections then. And again, these selections have been going on up and down the country, across in Ireland as well, obviously with what players everyone thinks should go. There are the mm. obvious ones in there. Now, Wales have come good at the right time. You lucky buggers again, eh? Right As time. always. As, as always. always. Smart. They're so smart. Forget the autumn. Six Nations, when it matters, but also a Lions year. But let's talk about some of your selections as well, because Gatlin knows these Welsh players really well. So if there are 50-50 calls, he's going to go with guys that he knows, guys that he knows um, can perform under pressure, what they're like as characters. And I think you can say lads will miss out on 50-50 calls because Gats doesn't know them. I know there's a Scotland contingent in the coaching staff now, but let's just yeah. pick out some of your picks, that some of the headline ones, out with um, the obvious. Okay. Um, well, they could have gone. I, I don't know what he's going to do scrum half. I don't know whether he's going to go Ali Price or whether he's going to go maybe two Welsh scrum halves. Who knows? Um, 
I mean, again, Sam Simmons is, I think he should go. I think his form has been that good. I think you're right, Steve, in the hype that has built up around him not playing for England has only increased his chances. But he's had one hell of a season. I just think if he goes, then they're going to have to look at the back row. You know, for me, you couldn't play Sam Simmons, say Josh Navidi, and maybe Tipperick or someone like that. I think, you know, if he if he plays, you're going to need big sixes and proper bruisers in that back row because he's a little bit different. He's He doesn't weigh much, does he? You know, he's not like a Vermeulen. He's very powerful, but you're going to need some size in there as well. Um, Duan van der Merwe, I think, has got a shout. Purely because of size. You lose George North, who's a big bloke. I don't think everyone can be the same size along the back line. You're going to need players that can carry into heavy traffic. And to do that, I think you have to have a fair bit of weight behind you. And he's he's got it. Um, there's so many. There's so many ifs, so many buts. You know, I've not picked Johnny Sexton. I've gone down bigger. Finn Russell and Owen Farrell. That covers 12 and 10, I think. With Sexton... Great player, but he does get injured a lot. And there's one thing you need on a tour is durability. I think with the other three, you've got that. Um, I think I don't think you can call Lewis Free Summit a bolter anymore, can we, guys? I think he's pretty much a definite with his form. Um, who else, Rick? CJ Stander. Well, the back row is an interesting one, isn't it? Because, yeah. you know, yeah. CJ Stander, there's talk of Hamish Watson, Sam Simmons... You know, we're going to take Billy Van Polar out of that, and a few people kind of agree that potentially he might not be in. But, um, Goody, we'll come on. Maybe you can chat a little bit about the back row before we kind of talk about the tens. We've got about six minutes until the captain gets announced. But when you look up at the makeup of the back row, notoriously you think you've got to go, and Stevie Ferris is well placed to answer this, but Goody, you'll know having faced back rows running down your channel. When you look up at the makeup of the back row, you know, it was out there that I didn't pick Hamish Watson. Let's get this on record that I did pick Hamish Watson to go, but there's a lot of debate. I do. Around. You, you didn't, yeah, yeah. Well, well, can we mute Shanks? Um, Goody, so <laughs> Billy Van Apola potentially talk of him missing out. Like, how do you see the makeup of this back row and how they're going to need to play against South Africa? I think the big thing, playing South Africa, and everyone's mentioned it, Stevie Ferris mentioned it earlier, no better bloke to, to talk about back rowers. Um, you, you need size but you, you need power. Um, so we're looking across the the four countries. We haven't got, we're not blessed with massive back rows, are we, at the minute in the current crop of players. You could potentially play Tyg Byrne at six, which gives mm. you a line-out option. But then when you're looking at power players, you look at someone like Tom Curry, who's not massive, but his metres after contact and his power in the tackle, both sides of the ball is phenomenal. Sam Simmons, exactly the same. Hamish Watson. I think the, the whole argument around size now is a bit of a myth. Uh, because these sort of perceived shorter players in the back row, like the three I've just named, um, who aren't, aren't six foot three, six foot four, they're still monsters in terms of ball carries and, and meters made. Um, so it's a lot about the close quarter stuff. I put in Josh van der Fleer in the back row as well. Been really impressed with him um, in terms of his work rate, both sides of the ball, his power. He, he's just relentless. Um, so you need explosivity. You need a bit of X factor in some of the bolters. Sam Simmons, for me, I'm chairman, captain, call it what you will, of the Sam Simmons bandwagon club. Um, and I have been for a couple of years, mainly because Eddie Jones hasn't got a clue not picking him. But, um, yeah, I just think with Toby Faratow as an eight, there's a potential for CJ Stander in there as well because he's big, but he's coming to the end of his career. Is that a factor? Whereas you've got energetic players like Curry, Watson uh, and Sam Simmons who can be you know, monster ball carriers without having the height to, to do it. So, um, yeah, I mean, Stevie, you're, you're the man on this. This is your area of expertise. You tell me. Yeah, well, I think just on CJ Stander, Goody, um, you know, Warren Gatland isn't the type of coach to give somebody the swan song that they want. You know, go back to South Africa, you look at Brown O'Driscoll in the third test um, in Australia, you didn't select him. If Johnny Sexton's not selected here again, you know, everybody wants to see Johnny Sexton finish his career with an unbelievable Lions tour. I don't think that's going to potentially happen. Uh, but in terms of the back row, I probably disagree with you, Goody, when it comes to size. I think size absolutely does matter. Um, we all remember that photo going around before the 2019 Rugby World Cup with the South African team with their, with their tops off. And they're absolutely shredded. Huge, huge men. And um, I, I said straight away, like, this is my tip for them to go on and win the Rugby World Cup. And again, at the weekend, La Rochelle, huge, huge men. They beat Leinster out the gate in the second half. Leicester, bigger men than, than Ulster in the second half. 
beat them out to get in the second half. So I, I totally agree with when it comes to power um, and it comes to those meters made after contact. But uh, I definitely think there's a place for having huge, huge athletes in your squad as, as the last couple of weeks have gone. I agree yeah, with that. What I'm yeah, saying is we're, we're, we're blessed with it, are we? I don't think uh, yeah, we true. can find five or six massive back rowers. Yeah, you're looking at maybe playing a Mara Otoji out of position at six to get someone sizable in that back row. You look across the Six Nations teams, and to me, there's not a, a, a monster that's six foot three, four, five in the back row. We're all looking at... <laughs> what know, about Billy Vinopolo then, Goody? What about Billy? Is, is it worth get, worth trying to get him fit for three or four games on, on the tour? Like We all know he is a huge, huge man, and, and he does have that in his repertoire, but we just haven't seen it of late. Yeah, mate, he's definitely an option, but then his, his performances in the Six Nations weren't at the levels that other players were. So Hamish Watson um, and those boys were, were on top of him. Um, you know, against Ireland, again, you didn't see a lot of him, did you, ball in hand going forward. So, again, Warren Gatton's got to be careful. Pick on reputation. You can do it in a few spots. You know, there's the argument around James Ryan. There's the argument around Owen Farrell, not informed, but he's going to get picked on credit in the bank. Mm. Um, you know, there's a couple of other Lions players in that that have been on previous tours. Jamie George is one. Got no form at all, but he's got a lot of credit in the bank from the 2017 tour to New Zealand. So, you know, you can't pick loads of players with credit in the bank without current form. And I think Billy just, there's better options in the back row than picking Billy Bonapola right now. Right, lads, before we carry on talking about, and we can talk about it all day, I just want to put on record, I've got a feeling Johnny Gray will go, but we'll talk about this after the Lions announcement of the captain. I think we're all in agreement. Again, I'll put on record again. Apologies. I did about a year ago. I said Adam Wynne-Jones shouldn't even go on the tour, and I'm sorry because <laughs> there's a lot of talk about the announcement. So as this kind of unfolds, I'm, I'm double screening. Look at me. I'm so cool. This was amazing. Um, Shanks, we'll start with you. One line mm. on captain. You've obviously picked it. Are you still with that, or have you changed your mind? And the reason why you're going to go with this guy? Adam Wynne-Jones. Um, I don't think there's many putting their hand up in terms of form and captaincy. Maybe Stuart Hogg. Uh, could have been, but look, he might not be the tour captain. Uh, I mean, the test captain. But you want a character. You want someone that's been there, done it with the experience. People respect him massively. He's one of the greats. So, one hundred percent, he should be captain. Yeah, Stevie, do you agree with Shanks that if Alan Wynne Jones is captain, that he should or shouldn't be a test starter? Do you think that the tour captain needs to be a test starter? Neil Williams agrees with us all. Yeah, I, th I think over the last what four or five tours, the the captain has always been um, a starter. Sam Warburton, Paul O'Connell, uh, Dreco back uh, as well. So um, I'm not so sure. Personal opinion, I'd be going with Alwyn Jones. His leadership qualities, he's well respected by the lads, by the coaching staff. He's toured South Africa. He knows what it takes. Um, so yeah, I'll go with Alwyn Jones. Cool, Goody. Um, again, I've had to apologise to you many times about Alan Wynne Jones. Um, did you see him as the the leader in the you know the Martin Johnson, the O'Connells, you know the O'Driscolls that we talk about? Some of the greats to have played the game to win this tour down in South Africa with him at the helm, and, and not Amara Toji. And again, we've spoken about Owen Farrow. I don't think he's got 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 a chance at doing that now. But um, Alan Wynne Jones all day long. I think the here and now, yeah, your name is captain. But like Shank said doesn't necessarily mean he will be the test captain because as we've yeah. seen many times, you know, if he's fit, and Jim, you'll know more about this than anyone else on this on this show, second rows, the pairing of the second row for the test matches when he gets there, it doesn't just mean you name Alan Wynne Jones captain now, he's going to be starting in the test match because there's so much rugby to go on between now and then. You've got other options come test time. I'm sure Stuart Hogg will start a fullback in a test. He's captain in Scotland exceptionally well. Owen Farrell, as much as people berate him, you know, if it gets to a point where Alan Jones has got an injury, you could make him captain for a test match if he's playing at 12. You could make Mara Toji captain further down the line. But for the here and now, I think you name Alan Jones as tour captain. Leadership credentials are second to none. Um, he's, you know, the video of him dancing in Ibiza, putting his fingers in his mouth, that makes me, <laughs> in a bubble, get him doing that every day. And it'll he's got it in him, mate. He's got it in him, away from the cameras, or maybe not so much in this case, he's got it in him. Yeah, so, Shane, so, well, that's the thing, Shane. So that's what I want to talk about uh, as we await the announcement. Because being a Lions captain, it's more than being a captain on the field. You look at what South Africa have done with Sia Khaleesi, and we think that that's going to be the narrative going forward to them, you know, unite a nation. Um, and there was mm. talk of Maro Toji, you know, they're both with Rock Nation and, and the stories that they've got going to South Africa. And the profile that Maro brings, potentially, 
Alan Wynne Jones, when he does these interviews, very quiet, very humble. Do you think he needs to open himself up a little bit more if he does get named as captain to be able to kind of make us all feel and all the fans feel a part of it as well and maybe add another layer to him already being, you know, one of the greatest mm. of all time or not? It's a bit late. It's a bit late now. He's like 35 or 36 years old. You're going to come <laughs> out of your shell. You think you would have done it a little bit earlier. Now's um, the time. But, but he is, mate, he's good fun as well. Like, and obviously he's got his guard up, as do a lot of people. You know, Owen Farrell's quite similar as well, isn't he, when it comes to media? You know, he does it, he says it, um, and you can tell he's sort of, he's not really being himself, I don't think. He's not letting it give him too much away. But away from the cameras, mate, he's a great bloke. You know, he loves going out, he loves the drink, he loves the social as much as anyone. But, you know, since he's become captain and since he's become this cult figure, and this great leader that he is, you know, I think it's, that's his job. Um, he leads from the front. Like, honestly, a few people have mentioned this recently. You know, he's that good in training and he's that intense. You don't want to get partnered with him for one, but you'll never, ever beat him from drill to drill. He runs, he sprints. <laughs> so, you know, so you're doing like a, ha a handling drill. He's pegging it straight across. Yeah. 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 But, he, but, he, but he, he's not like you, Jim. He doesn't need to impress. He, you know, he oh, just does it naturally. Well, one thing he does need to do, Steve, you can maybe talk about this, is a level of acceptance. And if he is announced as captain in the next couple of minutes, um, do you think he'll have a shaved head or do you think he's going to carry on <laughs> holding on? Andrew, I don't think he's had time to get it knitted, but obviously, <laughs> Steve, you might be well placed. <laughs> you've got to look decent as well. And you look great. I love that hoodie that you've got on, by the way. Look at you. You're right on brand. I tell you what, Jim, this is a comfortable hoodie. Thanks very much to Rugby Pass for sending me a little bit of merchandise in the post. Picked it up yesterday, so very good. Yeah, I think Alaman Jones, if he gets uh, wins the tour, wins the test series, there'll be um, hair transplant companies all over the world willing to give him a free one, Jim. So he'll be trying his level best to make sure and get a test, a couple of test victories. But yeah, He's uh, he's a great guy, great character. He was actually my first roommate when I went over to Penny Hill Park in 2009, opened the room. There's Alan Wynne Jones standing there, a huge man, um, obviously back with the Ospreys then, played against him a couple of times. Uh, absolute gentleman. Anything, we, you know, the relationship that we ended up having was, was brilliant. We became friends. Um, he helped me out, I helped him out. And uh, yeah, it's great to see how far he's come over the past, well, over a decade now, and he's still trucking on. And um, I bet against them, Jim, and back in 2017, and I learned the lesson back then, 2017, um, that they're not back against Alan Wynne Jones, and I think he's just going to keep on trucking. He's uh, he's like a fine line, isn't he? Yeah, well, I uh, again, I don't want to talk too much about that. I feel embarrassed that I even mentioned his name in that vein. Stevie, how do you think Johnny Sexton's feeling right now? I mean, there's obviously a lot of talk. Goody's mentioned it some of his injury issues, what are they saying in Ireland? You know, one, are they thinking he should go? Or, you know, secondly, what are they thinking about, um, you know, his credentials as the leadership and the captain? It's either all in or not, it seems, with Johnny Sexton that they're looking for. Yeah, definitely, Jim. Uh, Joe McNamara put in a, a, a tweet just to reply to the fan zone fans here saying Sexton captain. Like, I don't think he is captain. Uh, I was chatting to Ron O'Gara there last night and he was saying about... Uh, you know, his rapport and relationship with referees, how he kind of comes across. I think that's going to be very important. Again, that's why I'd be pointing towards Alan Jones of being captain. But just on Sexton and where he is, um, he's obviously injured, went off against Exeter, field HIAs, didn't play against La Rochelle. He's not playing this week against Connett in the Pro 14. Like, if they're going to bring him on tour, the whole... Every single press conference that Warren Gatlin walks into, it's going to be, what about Johnny Sexton? Is Johnny Sexton mm. fit? What about that? And and for me, that takes um, a lot of uh, the limelight and a lot of what probably Warren Gatlin and the coaching staff want to talk about away from them. So it's it's a, it's a really interesting one. Again, Warren Gatlin just you know he likes to take the pressure off the players himself um, and to be talking about Johnny Sexton for the first three weeks of tour of when he's going to get playing. I'm sure he particularly doesn't particularly want that, Jim. So yeah, here in Ireland, it's everybody's apprehensive. Everybody's worried that he's not going to get selected. I'm still in two minds, um, but maybe him himself, Jim, he's made his own decision that, you know, it's not for him. His health is his wealth and he's going to stay at home. So we'll see how this pans out over the next half an hour. Yeah, I think we're close. We can see Gats, good friend of mine, my mentor on screen now with Lee McKenzie chatting on Sky Sports, obviously about to announce the captain. Goody, when you look at this England team and, and the kind of success they had at the World Cup, do you think Gats is raging? Not raging. Do you think he, he's finding it quite difficult to see 
out of that group of players, which ones he can take with the leadership credentials coming through as well. Because Owen Farrell, you could arguably say, would have been a shoe in as well before the tour and a front runner with him and Marrow to be captain. But the way that kind of England played a few times, the way that they kind of conducted themselves as well, is there's talk, you know, in the background that it's going to be difficult for Gatlin to pick these players that last year they would have been the backbone of the Lions squad. Yeah, it's all about timing, isn't it? And we've we've been through loads of conversations around the pandemic and move the tour or have the tour on. And you hear a lot of the players that are informed saying, we want the tour to go ahead at, at this time because they know they've got more of an opportunity. We've got, we've got to stop harping on about 2019 and us getting to the World Cup final because if you go back actually to the semi-finals and, and when obviously Wales lost to South Africa and, and England beat New Zealand, Warren Gatlin said to Eddie Jones, um, you know, there was a bit of banter in, in the press conference, wasn't there, about... You know, you've just played your cup final by beating New Zealand. And then Eddie Jones comes back with enjoy the third or fourth place playoff. So um, at the time, you'd have had to have picked a load of the England boys because they were fantastic. But you've got to pick mm. on form. The majority of your squad, you have to pick on form. And looking back at the Six Nations, looking back at how England performed in numerous positions, Johnny May, a couple of years ago, was one of the best wingers in the world. And people aren't really mentioning him at the minute to be in the Lions picture. Um, everyone's talking about Lewis Reece Summit, who two years ago was nowhere because he was a young kid, probably still doing his GCSEs. So um, it's all about timing. I don't think Warren Gatland has any issue not picking a, a bunch of England players um, because he's got to pick on form. Eddie Jones said back in November, he wants at least 20 England players on this Lions tour. Can't see that happening. We'd be lucky to get 10 at the minute. Yeah. I, think, I think for this, sorry, Jim, I was going to say is that the Lions will learn a lot from the World Cup final 2019 and this squad that's going to get selected will give us a massive inkling into how the Lions are going to play. You know, do they do they want to try and match them physically or are they going to play, are they going to play like a wider, faster game? So it's really intriguing to see. And I think from selection in a couple of minutes, we're going to get a proper idea of what well, we're going to have an idea of actually how the Lions are going to play. Because typically with the Gatlin team, it's set up pretty simple isn't it? You know, it's it's game line, it's the same way, it's tiring defences uh, and working defences. So, but I don't think you can do that against South Africa. I think you're going to have to play. You're going to have to play a bit. Yeah, and with that as well, Shank, so we, me and Goody spoke to Dan Bigger in the week. Uh, he's probably mm. been the form 10, well, he hasn't probably, he has been the form 10. You look at the leadership in this Welsh squad to come good in the Six Nations and we're, we're all talking about Alan Wynne-Jones and the captaincy. You know, that man, mm. Dan Bigger, is he much of a leader on the field? He looks like he is. Um, but, you know, why is he not potentially being spoken about to be in a role like that? Is that just a step too far for him? I think it's always difficult, I think, as a 10. You've got so much on your mind. And then to lead a team as well. He does it naturally anyway. He's, always, he's a talker like every good, every 10 is because they're directing people around the field. I think temperament, though, with him might be a bit of an issue because he loves complaining. You know, he complains to the ref every single, a lot like Johnny Sexton. You know, Ten part of you just thinks, well, doesn't. Just, yeah, but part of you just thinks, just shut up, let the ref get on with it and, and sort out yourself out. But with Dan, I think his time in Northampton has really benefited him because, you know, if there's one criticism of him previously, it's been that he hasn't really want, played much rugby in terms of really attacking the line and bringing his backs into it and bringing his centres into the ball. But now, you know, the, these last couple of years at Northampton, I think it's been brilliant for him. And we're seeing a slightly different, he's evolving his game. You know, he's becoming more of a threat, ball in hand. He's bringing his backs into the game more as well. He's not necessarily playing as pragmatic as he used to. So, look, it's it's good to have him and someone like Finn Russell, like a yin and yang. I think that's well, what you need. Yeah, well, hopefully we'll hopefully. see that. Yeah, um, Stevie, um, a few lines on Gatland. Uh, he's obviously needs to lean on his coaches. Um, do you think he'll be picking players that are on form or do you think he'll be pick, picking players that he knows? Um, you know, the, obviously the talk of Sam Sippens, there's, there's talk of Danny Kerr as well potentially being picked and there's these wild cards being thrown out there, Marcus Smith. The guys that are in form in the Premiership that are playing well, uh, you know, John Cooney's name's been thrown around there as well. Like, how much do you think someone like Gatland is leaning on the coaches as a joint decision? Like, you look back at the 97, obviously, Lions tour, the famous one in South Africa. You know, Martin Johnson was in selection for the for the test team and who he should have picked. Gatlin, that kind of guy, or is he going to make the sole decision himself, which you think could be a joint decision across the board? Uh, lads, just, I know, Shanks, you probably know him better than I do, but, like, Warren Gatlin's a pretty cold-hearted type of guy. You know, he's... Um, Savage. He's, he's, he's fairly ruthless. <laughs> um, and yes, he back is. Into, yes, he is. Back, 
back in 2009, I, I injured myself in training uh, the week before the first test. So I, I was out of action. And I was sitting on the physio table. Tour was over. Um, Ian McGee can come up to me, Steve, you're really sorry about this injury. You know, devastated for you. All the coaching staff, you know, devastated. And then like half an hour went past sitting there with a bag of ice on my knee. And Warren Gatlin just came over to me and says, uh, you'll learn from this. And just walked off. And I was like, I was like, what? I was like, <laughs> I was like, uh, right, and, and away, away he went. And I was like, okay, well, what did he mean by this? Well, what, how will I learn from getting injured and training? So when it, when it's a week before Test match rugby, I'll just set it out, fake an injury. I, I, I don't know what he was on about, but the longer I kind of went through it in my head and everything, it just felt, I felt like. He, he obviously wanted me in a squad and and maybe that I was going a bit too hard in training. I, I don't feel like I was. Maybe I was in his his opinion. But he just came across as being like, you know, this is this is me. This is the way I said. This is what I think. And I, I'm not sure if he has the same approach to, select, to selecting we'll a squad. Steve, Stevie, mate, it's, it, Alan Wynne jones mate, it's, in, it's, it's coming. We could come back to you about you. I mean, yes. this is all news, but this is what we thought. Oh, well, humble pie for Jim. There we go, Jim. <laughs> I mean, is he, is he really there? Is it now? Is he really there? Or is that a hologram? What is it? It's a hologram, I think, James. But this um, blows my mind. I've gone back. I've known you for years, Jim, and we work closely together. You've written this man off time after time after time. So you call yourself a rugby expert. He's now the British and Irish Lions captain for the summer tour to South Africa. Apart from an apology, what else you got to say, Jim? I'm sorry, again, I, I, there's nothing more I can say. But to be fair, I did go back on some of my points. Look, you know, Alan Wynne-Jones, I think we can all agree, wasn't in amazing form last year. I think the timing has worked well for him in terms of um, not playing much rugby this year. Obviously, um, the Autumn Nations uh, Cup was quiet for them, then going to the Six Nations. And Wales, obviously, got a little bit of luck in that. But to to win the Six Nations and him be front runner of that. But I did a bit of digging on some of the stats as well, because, you know, we can talk a bit about the second rows, but, you know, like people are talking about Johnny Gray, and I've got a feeling he still might get picked. Of you know, oh. of Yeah, I think so, man. I've just got a feeling. But Alan Wynne-Jones, yes, he gives away a few penalties. Yes, he doesn't carry the ball as much. But you look at the effectiveness in the collisions that he's involved in, whether that be breakdown, whether that be holding people down, the old school parts of the game. But his collisions in the tackle, he's a dominant tackler and the fact that he's a born leader. And I don't think anyone else has stood out. I think we can all agree with that. I don't think Marrow's stepped up to the mark and said, look, pick me as captain. My, his discipline was poor. You know, Owen's the same. England have been poor. Johnny Sexton, captain of Ireland. Ireland have been, you know, not great and, he, and he's had his injury problems. So for me, is the right call. And uh, yeah, I was right, basically, lads. I was right. I picked him as captain. I was right. But you, you need a, you need a good rapport with your coach as well. He has that with Gatlin because they've got the history together. They know him quite well. Um, Steve, you, I mean, you boys would know Gatlin. You walk past him and he'll just nod to you like that. You don't know whether he likes you or he hates you. Yeah. Like he keeps his yeah. cards so close. Like he didn't speak to me for a week once in camp, and then I was in the gym doing squats. He just walked past, went lower as I was going down, and that was it. Like, well, yeah, that's, that's the whole. He's, that's, he's got a point. A little wow. bit lower, yeah. Like he, <laughs> he was a fitness guru, um, but but he's got like Gatland. He's got a he's got a persona. You know, he's he's got an aura about him, and certain people have that. I mean, us all have it when we walk into a room. You know, people get excited and and you know start to sit up a little bit. Big Lol has it as well. Um, Alan and Jones has it. Gatland has it as well because he's. He's quite quiet in, in the way he, he approaches stuff. He's quite softly spoken. Um, but then all of a sudden, phew, he's gone. And uh, the mad dog in him comes out. So that's I think that's important, you know, to have, you know, like a, a captain that the coach really knows um, well. And they've got that rapport. I, I would have liked to have seen something a bit unsafe. Go on, Goody, because I, I think there's a part of this. Yeah, go on. Yeah, the other thing we haven't really spoken about, and part of Adam and Jones being captain and Warren Gatlin being that sort of leader, is this tour is going to be very different. So they're going to be in a bubble the whole time. You know, they're going to be based up in Gauteng for the first three games, I think it is, uh, just in a camp, basically. There's going to be no real going out into the community, doing going to the bars or whatever. You know, the real Lions things that we, we all love as fans and, and love watching back on the, the living mm. with the lockdown videos and stuff like that. It's going to be really intense in this bubble that they're in. So that I think they start off three weeks in Gauteng, or for three games in Gauteng, then they go down to Cape Town for 
another three weeks um, or three games and then back up to Joburg for the last two tests. So it's going to be a, a massive effort from everyone to entertain each other in the bubble. Um, and so Warren Gatlin and Alan Wynne jones as captain, you name him as captain, great, but it doesn't mean he has to be captain of the test matches because it's going to be such a different tour to what we're used to. So, um, you know, characters are going to have to come out. You're going to have to have fun guys on the trip that can entertain everyone because, as we all know, when you're locked in a hotel for a period of time, I'm thinking room service. Other boys are thinking we need to get out and have fun. And, you know, they can't in the current pandemic, can they? Yeah, That's what Clive Woodward did in 05. Roomed everyone on their own. Honestly, it was the, it was so boring. You know, because England won the World Cup in 03, you know, because but England knew each other, didn't they? You know, they were they were a team that had been together for a long time. So they roomed it, they they had their own rooms because sleep was the biggest obstacle to recovery. But and, and um and Clive Woodward did that in 2005. Honestly, it was the most boring thing ever. Like no social at all. Sounds crap. Uh, Goody, yeah. um, what we're hearing is is that he's, he's going to pick 37 as opposed to 36, which opens up the door to potentially someone else. Manu Tuolangi, his name's being thrown about, mm. potentially. Where do you think that that's coming in? I mean, Rory Sutherland at Loosehead, um, yeah. I'm not too sure. I think he might be injured, you know, and that's why I'm picking. Yeah, he is injured, yeah. So I don't know. Where do you think he sees that extra player coming in, Goody? Well, potentially, you know, I think a lot of people have broken a 36-man squad down into 20 forwards and 16 backs. Um, most people have picked four second rows. It does allow perhaps for a fifth second row and have Tygburn to be able to cover second row and back row, so it gives you that extra height. But a wild card, and is he a wild card, Manu Tuolagi? Yes, he is, because he's not played rugby for six months. Um, but my God, and Shanks will, will know more about playing a centre like him. When you've lost George North as a powerhouse, and you've got an opportunity to have someone spare like Manu Tuolangi, give him an opportunity to get fit. He is an X-factor player like no one else. Now George North has gone, I think, in those positions who can make it be a real sort of match changer. So uh, maybe it's someone like him. Maybe, he, you know, he, he wants a, an extra forward in there. So you go 21 forwards and 16 backs, and that gives that back row, second row balance, another player. Um, and maybe Rory Sutherland, I don't know how badly he is injured. I have heard he's, he's out for quite some time, but... To me, it sounds like maybe a man or two along, he might come into the mix a bit more and, and you can justify picking him because you've got that extra player uh, allowed in the squad. Well, just on Rory Sutherland, lads, I'm really good mates with his agent. I um, actually chatted to him this morning. So, breaking news, uh, Rory Sutherland is is pretty good. He, uh, he had a bit of a shoulder injury, but I don't think there's too many more question marks that uh, around his fitness leading into the Lions tour. By all accounts, he's going to be fit and ready and round to go. Well, there we go. Breaking news. Yeah, I should have put him in. Uh, Stevie, while we've got you then, um, we've been going back and forth on the WhatsApp after Ulster played the other night. Um, I've been going back and forth on my second row picks about who's going to partner Alan Wynne jones if he does start the first test. Um, obviously, Maro Toji, a dead cert, but out of the island second rows, do you think James Ryan's got enough in the bank to be named? Oh, geez, well, what, what's happened like to James Ryan? I, I know he's been struggling a bit. He, he got uh, knocked out, didn't he, in the in the first game of the Six Nations against Wales? He's sort of been in and out. hasn't Was it twenty odd games in a row? He, he played without losing uh, when he first came onto the scene. Uh, Captain Ireland under twenties had massive success there. Uh, big, tall, huge man. Um, but when you stand him beside the likes of Snyman, uh, Etzebeth, uh, Mostard, like he's not as he's not that big. You know, he's just like he's he's like the rest of us. Um, and Henderson as well. I, I'm just not sure what way they're going to go. Will mm. Gatlin take a bit more on reputation, or will Henderson go down? Or sorry, will he go down the route of Henderson, who's started to find a bit more form in the in the previous Six Nations era? But yeah, again, Jim, as an Irish fan, with the way the results went at the weekend, very very nervous because I'm not sure. Like if both guys were left out, I wouldn't be surprised. Could you this see is why Ryan? it's so hard. This, this is why it's so hard because. Through the Six Nations, no team has really, really stood out where you're thinking, right, that is going to be the absolute backbone of it. And we've seen it in well, previous Scotland ones. Did. Scotland did. And they finished fourth. <laughs> you finished fourth, mate, which, yeah, is, which was a positive. <laughs> which was a positive. Get the player of the tournament and finishing fourth. What? Happy, happy. Never happened. Should absolutely never happen. But no team has really properly stood out. And I think this is, this is why it's such a big t talking point, is that there's probably only three or four players in that squad, which you could probably say absolutely are cemented on. You know, you bet um, your mortgage. I know you 
good you don't have one, but we do. Um, on <laughs> on them to uh, on them to be he in. Either he said he told me. Otherwise, <laughs> otherwise it's just so subjective. You know, it, who knows? Who knows? Well, that's the romance around it. Goody, let's talk about scrum halves. A lot of debate around that. Um, you know, we we were chatting about Ali Price as well, weren't we? I'd love to see him go, but he did get charged down against England. He got ch charged down by Ryan Beard as well. He might have an outside ch ch chance as well, Steve. Who knows? But where do you see the scrum half situation going? Do you think he'd pick someone like Danny Kedge? Would he go someone like Ben Spencer? Do you think he'll just go with kind of what we know? And uh, I mean, there's Ben Spencer on screen there. You could see him picking someone like Spenno because of the way that they want to play. But do you know more about scrum halves than me? Yeah, definitely. I think um, yeah, the one that's nailed on is Connor Murray uh, in terms of form and, and, and history with the mm. Lions, I think. Um, you know, he's definitely going to go. But obviously, you then look at the two Welsh guys, Gareth Davis and, and Williams. Um, and, and Williams played exceptionally well for, for Wales against England, didn't he, uh, in that game. Mm. But then some people perceive him as the second choice uh, to, to Gareth Davis. Uh, you know, potentially that was with it, without the injury. I think he would have carried on as first choice. So he's in the mix. Um, obviously, Ali Price is Scotland's number one. Uh, but it's, it's an area really where there is a bit of weakness. So that's why Danny Kerr's come into the conversations around his form at Harlequins. I don't see Warren Gatton picking him. He hasn't picked him uh, previously in 2017 when he was in some decent form then. So I think you're going Connor Murray, Gareth Davis and Ali Price. Uh, he likes his box kickers. Ben Spencer, again, someone else that has got a great kicking game, but I don't think he's in that great a form to say I justify a Lions position and I'm not playing international rugby where someone like Sam Simmons at number eight has got that form at club level without having played international rugby. So, for me, Conor Murray, Gareth Davis and Ali Price were my three picks. Uh, but I wouldn't be surprised to see Thomas Williams in there as well. And then what about 10? I think we just saw a message from um, something Granger just popped up on screen about Marcus Smith. And then we've got another one from Lewis Birch around George Ford. Um, are you going to lay an egg if uh, George Ford gets picked? Do you think we could see an outlier in that 10 position? <laughs> Uh, mate, you've got four quality fly ass picks on in Tim Russell, Dan Bigger, Owen Farrell, and Johnny Sexton. I get the Marcus Smith conversation around his form for Quinns, but you've got Finn Russell, who's a magician who play, can play that similar sort of role. You know, something different from your standard 10, who's a controlling 10, like a, a Bigger, like a Farrell, like a Sexton. So you've got a point of difference with Finn Russell. Do you need to go outside of that with Marcus Smith? I don't think so. Uh, George Ford, wonderful fly half on the front foot. Um, really is, but physical. Where was he, you know, in the World Cup final? You know, big games when you're not on the front foot, George Ford does go missing. And physically, you know, that he will get targeted massively if he is a 10. So I can't see him being in the, in the mix either. I think uh, for me, it's Dan Bigger um, as, as probably first choice to start off with. Finn Russell, I'd have on the bench as someone that can come on and change a game if we were picking our test team today. Um, Owen Farrell could probably look at playing 12. Um, uh, as an option and they're my three picks Johnny Sexton misses out and as we spoke about earlier and Shanks mentioned you know the, the form um, has been was good at the back end of the Six Nations for Sexton that last game against England but the big question marks are around his fitness and his ability to finish 80 minutes and as we see at the minute um, you know with the concussion he's had and he's had a few now I think you just need to to worry about his health and, and you know he won't be trying to push himself to play when he is concussed so it's probably best that he you know, he just takes the summer off, I think. Yeah. Uh, Shanks, let's talk a little bit about the centres then, mm. because uh, arguably you could say we're a little bit kind of light in terms of form, right, in that position with Manu Tuolangi, Jonathan Davis just coming back from injury as well, who could be a mm. shoe in his quality. But who would you like to see picked in, in the centres for the balance if Owen Farrell, say, is picked at 12? Um, Robbie Henshaw, I think, has been the pick of the bunch. During the six nations, his quality, mate, like his work rate is unbelievable. He chases everything, he tackles everything, he's got pace, he hits lines. Um, I reckon these last sort of 18 months, he's just gone so far up there. You've got to be so fit to play the game, and he does. He never ever stops. You know, you see a lot of players, you know, just filtering out onto the wing, you know, just to try and get a bit of breath. Never, he's always in on the action, whether it's 12 or 13. Um, I didn't pick Manu because I wasn't sure on his fitness. Um, but if he's close to being fit, mate, he's exactly what the Lions need. A proper bulldozer of a player. You know, someone that is... And he, he's a player that doesn't necessarily rely on guile to get himself back to... Ma you know, he's a he's a physical bloke. If he's fit, then I don't think it's going to take him long to get a bit of form because he doesn't rely on, on vision, really, and silky skills, which he's got. He's more of a robust 
sort of strike runner, if you like. Um, I picked Gary Ringrose as well. I think he's been quality as well. I thought, you know, he'd probably shine out of the two um, Irish centres at the start. But no, I think Robbie Henshaw has taken that limelight, and rightly so. And Henry Slade as well. It's like the Rolls Royce of centres, isn't he? A bit like Jerry Guska. And I think if you want to play a little bit wider and a little bit more expansively, you're going to need ball players in that midfield somewhere, whether it's at 12, whether it's at 13. Henry Slade gives you that. Um, and also Stuart Hogg gives you that as well at 15. Um, so I like, you know, if, if you're just relying on one 10, if you're just relying on your 10 to throw that miracle pass to, to get you going, to, to set tries up, then you're going to struggle. So I always like to see whether it's 15, whether it's 13, 12, an extra ball player there. And they've got options. They've certainly yeah. got options. Well, they have. Well, Neil Shanks, I'm not too sure if he's your dad, has uh, messaged in as well. And he's mentioned about Chris Harris in the squad at centre. Real underrated uh, player, but class. I've put him in my squad. I think the physicality that he's got, there he is. Is that your dad, Shanks, or not? Yeah, you're biased though, mate. You're biased. Chris Harris is, is a good player. Like, and he, he played well against England, but... Everything is passive, really. In a, it, it's not. What? It's not aggressive enough. What? His work rate is good, but it's he's passive tackles. He's really one of the most, he's not, area. It's one of the most physical tacklers in the game. Are you for real? Are we watching the same game? <laughs> I wouldn't call him I passive. Don't, I don't. I, I, I don't see, see it. I, I, I don't. I don't see him as, as as being physical enough, mate. Like he's got great work rate, makes tackles, but. There's nothing really powerful about him. He's not a massive ball player. You know, he's, he's good at a few things. He's good at drift defence, makes his tackles. But as a lion, mate, as a lion, as the creme, or creme de la we know, creme. We, we know I'm, it's the I'm, best of the best. We know I'm not having it. Best. I'm not having it. I think Hugh Jones is, is a better player. Well, J.K. Memza said Chris Harris is the highest tackle stats in the Premiership. It's covered defence metres. The highest in the Six Nations. Now you're talking, JK. I prefer um, him on top tier. The and most the dominant story. tackles. The most dominant tackles. <laughs> in the Six Nations to the back. So, um, passive, yeah. actually. It's just passive. He's, yeah. He's, yeah. He's, he's, uh, he's passive. Um, so just, just on Robbie Henshaw, Jim, and, and you'll probably be able to answer this for me. Like, since he started dyeing his hair, Jet Black, he's been playing unbelievable. <laughs> so, like, give, give us your thoughts. You obviously dye your hair on a regular basis just to cover a couple of the bald spots there. Uh, left off that hat to have a look. Well, I shouldn't because I'm trying to. I'm trying to just. Show Goody is Goody has he had a bit of work done? Goody has he? He's not had a bit of work done yet, but he has got magic dust that he applies to it every day. Just tips it on the top of the head to cover the. <laughs> the thing is, when you and you're six foot nine in heels, no one can see the top of your head. So we have to get him to bend down, and that's where we uh, he adds the dust in. Literally, boys, are you, are you saying are you saying Chris Harris should be in the Lions squad then? Oh, oh, I'm going to hammer. I'm going to hammer. I'm going to hammer now on the comments. No, no, he's yeah, not. I, what what I'm saying is he, he's not in my squad, but he to say he's just a passive drift defender, I think is pretty harsh when he starts say All right. more dominant tackles. But yeah, I know I can see both sides of the argument. Does he make the initial squad for me? No, um, but um, you know, it's I like, said he was a good player. I said he like was a good player. Thin, it's like enough, thin, though. Yeah, Shanks, it's like calling me thin. It's just not true. You've said he's a passive defender and he's he's got the most dominant tackles in the, as a back in the Six Nations. So just got to call your oh. out and stats. No, yeah. well, who's who's writing those stats? You've just read that, mate. You just naive. <laughs> uh, well, I agree with them. Actually, Dave, it was Dave. Cheers, mate. I've got a few people in the background. Just, I'm going to mute you in a minute, Shanks. Uh, Stevie, let's have a look at the making yeah. of the back row then. If it, if it was a test tomorrow with who we think it might be, I know we don't know the squad. Let's pretend Sam Simmons is going to get picked because that's everything that we're hearing. Who else would you go with him? Would you pick an Underhill in that squad, let alone the team, or a Curry or a Faletau? How would you balance that? Yeah, interesting one. Like Jim, uh, for me, I think Falatai at number eight. He's just been uh, he's been unbelievable. Anytime he's been given that opportunity, he's a big man. Um, you know, the, the try that he scored uh, for the Lions against the All Blacks was just sensational in the corner. Um, he offers so much. I think he's a bit of a ball player as well, and he's coming into. We're talking a lot here about timing. I think he's coming into a rich vein of form once again. Who else would I have in there? Like Tom Curry, it's it's hard not to select Tom Curry because of what the way he's been playing over the last couple of years. But I'm not so sure. I, I think I'd maybe like to go Underhill um, at seven. He's just an absolute freakish competitor, freakish athlete. You know, I was over there in, in Twickenham when, when he was playing six and Curry was playing seven. And they destroyed Ireland. I think it was 57 points or something to put on the scoreboard. And those two lads were just 
out of this world um physical edge that they brought that day and like they were you know made boys out of the likes of peter romani cj stander that day i think tag burn was maybe playing in the second row so uh yeah he, he's he's an outside chance for me um and you know tag burn is he a, is he a second row is he a back row i think for the scarlets he was brilliant in the back row for ireland he's uh he's been pretty good anywhere he's played and he certainly deserves to be on the plane. I'm just not sure whether or not he'll start in the test matches. Do you know what? It's like it's the, the form is just going to come, and Gatlin is going to pick lads that he trusts firstly, but also pick up a bit of form on the run. And just go back to 2009, Tom Croft was nowhere near the squad. He ends up Quinney. Uh, I gouge is Leo Cullen. He's off mm. the tour. He comes in. Joe Worsley isn't in much form. I get injured. Next thing... Tom Croft starts the first half, scores two tries, was probably a man of the match. So things can happen so, so quickly. And I think the back row, there's always a few surprises that are thrown up. OK, well then quickly then, before we hopefully see the announcement, Goody, do you think we'll see any shocks then that we've not seen? So if people haven't seen your team, uh, do you think we're in for a shock? Can you see a Finn Russell not getting picked and a, a Marcus Smith coming in? Do you think there's going to be a headline or do you think Gatlin's going to go kind of safe as houses, but potentially pick someone like a Sam Simmons who everyone can agree is in form and a little Sarie Samet as the youngster on tour. Anyone yeah. else? Do you want to change your mind before? No, I'm sticking with my squad. Um, you know, I might have put Sutherland in there. Uh, I thought he was injured worse than he was. But, um, yeah, I think we're going to – I can't see anyone outside the box completely, but with Gats, you just never know, do you? Well, what's up, Shanks? Have you got the squad there? Yes, coming through now. Here we yeah, go. Guys. I've got my – Do you want me to tell you? Do you want me to tell you? No, I've got Leonard now. Maybe it's buffering. <laughs> Josh Adams. Yes. Josh Adams, correct. Rightly so. Bundyaki. Oh, Bundyaki. Dan Bigger. Yeah, Bigger. Yes, sir. Yeah. Elliot Daly. Surprised. Very surprised. Utility. Gareth Davis at nine. Gareth Davis. Wait for the next one. Owen, Owen Farrell. Farrell. Yeah. I mean the next one. Chris Harris. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and sure. Thanks, Thanks, George. George. Yeah. Oh, Chris Harris. Stuart Hogg, okay, let's see what his picture looks like. Oh, oh, he's he's just, just slid in the game now. Jim, your mate Thomas on the comments is going to be happy. He's just been Connor Murray, great me. picture of Hoggy. Great picture of Hoggy. Connor Murray. Ali Price. Ali Price, get in this! Get in this, son! <laughs> yeah, young Lewis Reece Summit. Yeah. Oh, oh Finn, come it's on, it. son. Come on, son. Go! Whoa! S is next. Is it Sexton? No, Sexton's not made it. Who and the over? Come on, the Scotland lads! Come on! There's your and Watson. There's your backs. Anthony Watson. Yeah, I'm ahead of you, boys. Liam Williams. Spoil don't, it, don't, don't, it, don't spoil it. Don't spoil it. Now the forwards. Here we go. He's a ghost. Oh. He sees dead people. Not bad. Not Jack Conan, you had him before, Goody. Pulled it. Pulled him out last minute. Fair play. Fair play. Cowan Sicky. Yeah, Luke Cowan Dickey. Tom Curry. Oh, nice. I like that selection. Xander Ferguson. Yes, sir. <laughs> Whoa. Called it. Called it. Talupe. Talupe Falatau. Boys, there's some left field decisions. Yeah, big time. Ty Furlong, Ty Furlong. Don't, don't spoil it, lads. Oh, Jamie George in the mix. Jamie George, all right. Ian Henderson called it. That yeah. Maybe, yeah. Not James Ryan, maybe not. James Ryan, maybe not. Johnny Hill. Oh, yeah. my God. Amazing for Johnny. Sort the lid out. Keep it. Narrow, oh, touch and go, touch and go. Oh! Alan Wynn. Skips. Oh! Wynn Jones. Called it. I said he was starting. Lou said. Courtney's made it, not played. Courtney Laws. 
Yeah. Oh my word! Versatility, oh, James though. Ryan. That means James Ryan's not in. Ken, Ken Owens. Andrew Porter, good shout, Jim. Yeah, called it. Wow. Sam Simmons, there we go. Go on, Goody, son. Go on, Goody. Oh, you've got him in. Rory Sutherland. Yes. Yeah. <sighs> Tipperick, he's an absolute world of a player, isn't he, Tipperick? Yeah. Mako, I've run the poll up. I'm sorry. I should have picked you. Lads, I'm buzzing. We just Billy need Hamish now. Sam Simmons, come on. Hamish. Hamish yes. Watson. Yeah, there we go. There we go. Wow. Lads, this is unbelievable. <laughs> oh, my goodness me. I, I, wow. I told you, I, I told you Warren so Gatlin hates, like hates, the, hates the Irish, doesn't he? Like, he hates us. Like, can someone mention? Oh. Did Tyke, Tyke Furlong didn't wow. make it. Wow. Tyke Furlong did not make it. No, he did. Yeah, he did. Yeah, yeah, yeah Tyke no. Furlong did. James Ryan, James Ryan did. I had a feeling James Ryan. I'm gutted for Johnny Gray. No, Billy. Um, my lads, where do we start? Um, God, let's go for the headlines. I mean, who's, who did he go for a scrum off? Ali Price, uh, Gareth Davis, and Conor Phil. Murray. Yeah, and Conor Murray. Let's start. Should we start with the front row? Yeah, yeah. go front row, Jim. Right, who have we got then? Uh, someone's going to I'm, I'm absolutely. Rory Sutherland. Yeah, let's start off. Lucid props as Wynne Jones, Rory Sutherland, and Mako Vanapola. Happy. So no, no Kean Healy. No. Uh, uh, Sutherland's big news, though, isn't it? That's a you know fully deserved. Yeah, I, I, well, I didn't pick him because I heard he was injured. That was yeah. why. No Genge, no Genge, no, no Marla, no Kian Healy. Yeah, yeah. but oh, all right, one English though, prop, like... one English prop in Maka Vanapola. Um, did he? Joe Russell, eight Scots. How good does that sound? <laughs> <laughs> Lads, this is unbelievable. Right, I'll start trying to stay calm. That's what happens when you finish fourth and have your best year ever. Mate, you mate, get on the line. Yeah, well, yeah. Oh, let, we'll come on to it. We'll come on to the um there's like lo obviously loads coming in, which is class. I'm absolutely buzzing. Yeah. So we've gone through the loose heads. Let's go through the hookers. Okay. Yeah. Jamie George. Luke Cowan Dickey. Yeah. And Ken Owens. I, I think Ken a lot Owens. of us had them. I mean all, yeah, yeah, all, all pretty legit. All good. Yeah, yeah. Tight Ed. So we've got uh, Ty Furlong. We've got Xander yeah. Vegas. I called it, mate. He's quality. Yeah, I'm telling you. Yeah, now. he is. Yeah, he, he is. is. And Andrew Porter as well. A lot of people were like, mm, "Come on, Andrew Porter." He's a big bloke, Andrew big. Porter. He's, He's huge, big. mate. He's exactly what you want. I, I had him in my squad. Oh, lads. Well, let's move on to the second rows. My goodness me. We we were chatting about this, for, uh, Stevie, about uh, Ian Henderson going and, and potentially, um, obviously, James Ryan, James Ryan not. I mean, I feel for yeah. James Ryan. I mean, picking Johnny Hill, for me, is a big call. I mean, Johnny Hill's a great player, quite inexperienced, but picking him ahead of James Ryan. Yeah, yeah no, it's, a, it's, a, it's a huge call. Like, it's huge. But do you know what? Like, I, I love the look of this team. I, I just think... Courtney Lord. So many surprises in there. Courtney Laws, like he hasn't played in ages. He wasn't part of the well, he actually got injured in one of the games in the Six Nations. Travis uh, six so and, left, and second row though. Yeah, so left field. But like I'm absolutely made up. Delighted for Ian Henderson. I think he's uh, mm. he's had his critics over the last couple of weeks, but bloody hell, he was one of Ireland's best players in the Six Nations. Um his work he's a big game player, isn't it? He's a big game player. Jim, he's a big man. He's you know, he's he's a tall, he's a big unit. He was there in 2017. He was one of the best players in the midweek side. He got man of the match against the Hurricanes when it was 33 all um, before the last test. He's been there. He's done it. He knows what it takes. So absolutely made up for him. Uh, but yeah, the second rows uh, and back rows. The second rows in number six. I think. Wow. What what selections? Unbelievable. Yeah, it is. Yeah, and I just want to call out my just before Goody. I just want to call out um, Rugby Passio Neil Martin who told me that he thought Carl Sinclair was going to go and I picked Andrew Porter. So, the experts, lads. But I'm absolutely buzzing on it. Um, what else? Yeah, Carl Sinclair. We'll come on to the props after. Um, should we talk about a bit about the back row? Obviously, there's yeah. no... Right, isn't there? No Sam Underhill. No, no Underhill. Underhill. No. So, Sam Simmons, just leave it there. Absolute world-class ball-in-hand player. Uh, Underhill, I, I just think his form since he's come back from injury hasn't been... 
as electrifying as, as others. Uh, Navidi misses out as well, which is a shame. I thought he played. Courtney well. Laws. Courtney Laws. And Courtney Laws. It's, it's the versatility, though, with Courtney Laws. He can play six, he can play second row. And, you know, in a reduced squad, and we're still trying to work out, yeah, 21 forwards he went with and 16 backs. You need versatility. Uh, that's what Courtney Laws gives you. Yeah, and then the obvious ones like Tipper Rick and, uh, and Hamish Watson. Um, anyone in there, Stevie, that you think uh, like, he would have got for yeah. you happy? No, like Jack Conan. Like, to, to yeah. me, that's a bit left field. Like, um, I didn't well, see Goody, him. Yeah. He had him. He really had him in his squad and up until the Leinster game at the weekend. Yeah. Swapped him for yeah. Van der Poel. Yeah. The, the, only, the only thing with him is, like, he's been so injury prone over the last couple of years. Like, it would not surprise me. Again, in the World Cup... The, he had a broken foot. Jordy Murphy had to fly out and cover him in the Rugby World Cup in 2019. Um, there's loads of question marks around his durability. The, other, the only other, like Falatai and, and Simmons, like I think, are, are two guys that I would love to have played with um, and hated to play against. So, yeah, the back row for me is, is really exciting. I think uh, Shanks could be right. Courtney Laws could find himself in the sixth jersey very easily. Imagine, yeah. oh, See you, Khaleesi. Courtney Laws. Boom. It's going to be unbelievable. Lads, I tell you what. We will, Jacob McDonald said 7K view, viewers. Let's say it's 7 million. I'm absolutely buzzing. I've not, I don't even know where I've put the names and stuff like that. Shanks, happy with the scrum offs? Yeah. I think Thomas Williams might feel a little bit lucky. I think if he's fit, um, he probably offers a little bit more, but Gareth Davis is still good. So, yeah, no real... No massive, huge surprises there, I don't think. Um, I had Ali Price in. I had Conor Murray in. It was either toss-up between Thomas Williams and Garth Davis. So, they've gone there. But, guys, the bats yeah. are the biggest talking point now. Well, well let's, wow. let's go there, Shanks. Shanks, let's go there. We Absolutely can bypass wow. the tent. Let's talk about, what, where do you want to start? Bundyaki? Yeah, did not see that coming at all. No Gary Ringrose. Am I right? Have I got that yeah. right? Yeah, 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 it's not. Yeah. Um, how, has, how has that happened there? Cause, well, no Henry been... Slade? No. Yeah. No. Harry. Harris, the most physically dominant tackler in this oh. nation. <laughs> Come on! I'm oh, buzzing. Hey, Scotland lads. Anyway, Bundyaki over, Ewan says, over to Alagi. Is Bundy, was Bundyaki I mean, injured? I'm sure he was playing for Connacht, weren't he, when the lads were playing? Well, he was in the squad, wasn't he, Stevie, in the Six Nations, but it was more Ringrose and Henshaw as the two centres. Yeah, well, well, didn't he, um, then he get sent off for the red card, didn't he? In the England game, yeah. Yeah, in the England game, so he's missed a few weeks. Um, he was out injured earlier in the season as well. Um, I want lads. I tell you now, Bundyaki has he has got something special. He does. He goes up. He bashes lads. He's got lovely ball skills as well. He can act as a second second receiver. Absolutely no questions about that. Um, he played against Ulster uh, just after the first lockdown, and I was just so impressed with him. Is vo how vocal he is on the pitch. Yeah. Like you know, he's such a good uh, communicator as well. I think he'll bring a bit of a bit of crack uh, and a bit of fun to the party. I think he's a really good lad off the pitch. So Bundyaki, I didn't see it coming. But I think it's only a good thing for the Lions. Like I thought, um, it was going to be a toss-up between Bundyaki and Robbie Henshaw about who partners Guy Ringrose, which it was, and they went with uh, Henshaw, and it was a brilliant choice. But did not see Bundyaki then being um, in Lions contention with the players we got, but. He's similar to Manu in a way, isn't he? You know, the type of player he is and how physical he is. But no one was speaking about him at all, as no one really was speaking about Chris Harris, who's a good defender. But <laughs> he's a decent defender. He's a decent defender. I said, he, look, I said he's good. And Goody, stop trying to pick on the week now. I said he's good, but I just said he probably doesn't offer enough around the field in terms of what everyone else offers. Wow, well, um, he does now. He does now. Uh, Shane, he does now. He's a lion, yeah. He does. What about Elliot Daly? My mate texted me this morning and said, oh, I reckon Elliot Daly's going to go. And no word of a lie, no disrespect to Elliot, I said, I reckon I've got more of a chance. But that was just me take, taking the mick. Uh, Goody, you know Elliot Daly really well. He obviously can play 13. He can play on the wing. He can play 15. He's got history with the Lions before. He's got a big old boot. No Slade, no Turinagi, can't believe that. But what about um, picking Elliot Daly as we see the squad come up on screen now? Goody, what are your thoughts on that? Well, I'm chuffed for Elliot because he's a lovely bloke, as anyone that knows him. Um, and having played with him, he was he, he, he's a real energy giver to everyone. So if you're picking on form, let's be honest, Elliot Daly shouldn't be in the squad. But what this squad has shown, it's a reduced squad, so 37 names. He's only taken 16 backs. You do need some versatility in there. Elliot Daly covers... 13 wing fullback. He was a test lion 
on the wing um, in the, the four years ago in New Zealand. His left boot, everyone knows it's an absolute howitzer, so it gives you that option as well. The fact that Slay's not in there, who's left-footed as well, you kind of start to look for reasons to pick other players that perhaps aren't your frontline players and what they give to a squad. Um, and that reason, Elliot Daly ticks a lot of boxes with versatility, his left foot, his goal-kicking. You go back to the Lions tour in... 2017, the penalties that he banged over in the test matches from about 400 yards out were phenomenal. So that gives you something, especially when from the test matches are going to play at altitude. You imagine yeah. a penalty from 22, Elliot Daly, his own 22, might be thinking, with altitude, I'll have a pop at this. And that could be something. And that's probably a reason why Gats has put him in there. Certainly not on form, yeah. his, his versatility and his ability with you know his skill set that he's got to, to add to a small group of backs. Just, just on this... Just on this, Jim, a question for you, Jim. Like, obviously, with a good Scottish contingent, eight lads, there's only eight Irish guys as well. In my own opinion, there's a lot more of the Irish lads put their hand up selection for selection than the Scottish guys. How much of an impact has the coaching staff of the Lions Tour had an impact on the selection? We talked about Gatlin having the final say, but surely, surely some of the lads in the coaching staff now have had an influence on some of the decisions made that, you know, Eight guys and only eight Irish. Oh, Stevie, come on, though. But you look at the makeup of the Six Nations, right? So Eng Scotland smashed England at Twickenham, right? Physically dominated them. The next <laughs> game against Wales, right? The next game against Wales, they could have won that game with 14 men. Obviously, Xander Ferguson got red carded. How good is it to see him in there? Um, to go away to France, I mean, they, they, they blitzed Italy, obviously. But to go away to France and win how they did when France thought they were going to win by 21 points. Gatlin wants players that can perform away from home. Now, not only did Scotland, when the pressure was on, perform away from home, but they were unbelievable. So I think you look at the backbone of what they're doing as a, as a team. Take, take out Glasgow and Edinburgh, the international stage, and also the profile of the players. Rory Sutherland, not just the Six Nations, but the last couple of years, don't really see him for Edinburgh. For Scotland, he's unbelievable. Like He, he, he rocks up every week. He's a, he's a dominant scrummager. And the same with Xander Fagerson. Xander Fagerson over ball is amazing. I'm gutted for Johnny Gray. Hamish Watson a given. Ali Price we were talking about, but he's big. You know what I mean? He's big and we were talking about his box kicks. But his kicking game around the breakdown, his speed of ball, I'm, I'm buzzing to see him. We spoke about Chris Harris as well. And obviously, Hoggy's a given. So, mm. I think, you know, I think... It's going to be interesting to see how it goes. Like, it, it really is. But Josh think, Adams I, was a big call, I think. Um, I think he deserves his spot. Well, he? He's a no, great nice work rate. Yeah. I, I thought he might not get selected. I, you know, we all thought Lewis Rezan was good. I think Van der Merwe is a really good selection. I really like him. Um, yeah. Just offers something different. He's so powerful. He's so fast as well. And you can use him out wide or you can use him in a tight offset piece for, for a bit of gain line. Exactly what... Um, you need, I think, you need balance with size in your back line. Um, Liam Williams uh, covers wing in 15. Are they, yeah, well, Liam Williams is obviously a, he's a top class player, like he's a test starter. Stevie, not in the greatest form at the moment. Yeah, I know. Yeah, Stevie, just um, we'll, we'll give a few lines on Johnny Sexton. Obviously, we're, we're excited. There was talk of Finn Russell. I mean, I threw it out there that it could potentially not have gone his way. Um, you know, you, right call then on, on Johnny Sexton not going. Do you think Gatlin's got that call right? Yeah, well, in my squad, Jim, I didn't have Johnny Sexton involved. I think, um, yeah, I, I think if he had played the last couple of weeks for Leinster, then he definitely would have been on the plane. But, you know, the physicality that there's going to be over in South Africa, not just in the test matches, like, you know, in these warm-up games, um, against some of the provinces and teams out there, it's going to be carnage. It's going to be, you know, so so physical. And I, I honestly think if he played in the first test, he started the first test match for the British and Irish Lions, that you wouldn't see him for the other two test matches. That's my own honest opinion. So yeah, I think Warren Gatland and the rest of the coaching staff have have got this one right. Who knows, Jim? News might break in the next couple of hours. Johnny Sexton does an interview with. Rugby pass and says, I pulled myself out of this. I wasn't happy. You know, my head hasn't cleared up. I've got to look after myself. My health is a wealth, everything else. Um, that might come out. But in a rugby decision, I think it's the right one. Well, let's just say, so Joe Marler obviously got left out of the squad. He didn't get um, a mention. But here's his tweet now. Line of duty finale vibe, which I get the case is not too impressed. <laughs> um, 
I've saved Line of Duty to watch. I'm not bothered about that. All I'm bothered about now is the fan zone and the Lions edition. But what Shulky means when he's saying that, Goody, you, you, you like a good tweet. Yeah, mate. Well, the Line of Duty finale last week, or Sunday night, wasn't it, was pretty upsetting. Uh, pretty underwhelming kind of thing. Not upsetting. Underwhelming was the word I was after. Um, so what Joe Marler's saying is that Lions selection is underwhelming. Basically, what he means is he's, he's not been picked. So his toys have come out of the pram and he's got on Twitter um, and uh, and come out with that line. So, listen, you saw our reaction to that squad. We were amazed. Shanks is devastated. Yeah. That he's made it. We're all chuffed to bits that Sam Simmons has made it. Um, let's not beat around the bush. 37 players named. I guarantee you, of those 37 players, not all of them will get on the plane. Someone, and the likelihood is between now and then, will get injured. So there will be changes. But for Joe Marler to say that, um, sour grapes, who knows? Put the phone down, Joe. Yeah, absolutely. I suppose he, he couldn't he couldn't expect to be like selected if he's turned down England. I mean, it's a big call, isn't it, to, to pick him? I like I think he's a great player. I would have taken him, but yeah, I mean, the, the thing with Joe Marler and with, with the reason we're talking about him, he pulled out of the Six Nations because he didn't want to be part of the bubble uh, and and be in yeah. that bubble for three weeks with England, even though they did go back to their homes uh, in the couple of the fallow weeks. So, if you're Warren Gatlin, you're thinking if he doesn't want to be part of the bubble, which is everyone's right and prerogative, if you can't if you don't think you can handle that personally, then what chance have you got in South Africa being completely away from your family? So, Warren Gatlin... Who's the biggest surprise? Who do you reckon the biggest surprise is in that selection now? Chris Harris. Chris Harris. Do you mean that? Do you mean that, Stevie? No, he doesn't mean that. Stevie, do you mean that or not? Uh, Luke Fitzgerald yeah, does. Uh, yeah, Luke I don't, Fitzgerald well, does nothing calls. Well, like anybody who watches him a lot says how good a player he is. I don't watch him as much as other people do, so I don't know as much about him. I would be going on a different bandwagon like Gary Ringrose because I watch him every single week. So, uh, you know, Jim, you obviously seen a lot more of him than I have. Oh. If you're well, sat the fence there, mate. I, well, um, he, he deserves his chance. Stations. He deserves his chance. He, he'll be a good midweeker, won't he, Shanks? Shanks, yeah. nice. you, need, you need them. You need them. Yeah. <laughs> what he's saying is he listens to other people and their opinions count more than yours does to him oh. that's, yeah, that's, that's my take on it just go to get your passport photo done and get off <laughs> uh, uh, lads just before we go because um, we, we're running over time we could obviously chat on here uh, for ages it, it's been brilliant I've absolutely loved it um, Goody what, what's your headline from this then what are you taking away where you're like wow uh, well, delighted for Sam Simmons. I think he deserves it. Um, the two probably left field ones for me were Courtney Laws, just purely because of injury, and perhaps Johnny Hill. You know, some some big players have missed out. Um, you know, we mentioned James Ryan, obviously no Johnny Sexton. Uh, but for me, Jack Conan coming in as well. Uh, I'm devastated with myself that I took him out after Lencer's performance at the weekend of my squad. But it's exciting, isn't it? We know the squad now. Um, we know there's a lot more water to go under the bridge between now and the first game in South Africa. But it's a squad with, you know, players with power, with difference. Um, can we handle the South Africans' power? Well, we'll find out because they've not played any rugby as a team since the 2019 World Cup final. So they're, you know, as unprepared as we are. Um, you know, Gats, it's exciting now to build up to the squad. Um, the right captain's been made. Um, some decent selections in terms of uh, players that are a little bit left field. Um, but, you know, Gats is the man. He knows how to win Lions series. And this is what he sees fit to, to take on the South Africans. And let's get behind it and, and look forward to an amazing tour, hopefully. Yeah, Stevie, happy, sad. Um, have we got an opportunity to beat South Africa down there with this squad? Yeah, we got an opportunity. I think just with the, the, the selection, the likes of Xander Fagerson, he's a big, big, big man. You know, him getting ahead of Kyle Sinclair, Johnny Hill ahead of Ryan. Uh, Bundiaki coming in again, just that you know he, he can be very one-dimensional when he wants to be, and he, he can take that uh, that fight to South Africa. So yeah, like as Scooty mentioned there, I think it's just now the squad's been announced. Let's get behind them. Let's everybody rally behind these lads. They're going to need every single bit of support that they can get to go out to South Africa, where I've been and and, and felt how difficult it is out there to grind out wins. And uh, this whole, let's hope that you know that the four nations can come together and um, really get behind the lads. And we wish them all the very, very best. And congratulations to all the guys who have been selected. You're now part of um, a historic team, and uh, you know, wish them all the very best, Jim. No, quite amazing. Um, Shanks, final word on mm. you. Then no, Jonathan Davis, obviously. Uh, Chris yeah. Harris has been a picture. <laughs> 
I think I think with some of the forwards, there's some there's some good calls there, some big calls. But I think yeah, what players we've thought were good selected, they replaced with quality still. So I think it's it's big. Some of the backs though did shock me. I'm not saying. You know, just because we didn't expect it, because the form hasn't been great. Um, so th there was a couple of left fields out there that none of us really guessed. But Stevie's right now. It's done now. Um, there'll be some disappointed people out there, and rightly so. People that probably deserve to go and felt they deserve to go and be playing it in um, some good rugby. But, mate, it's so exciting that they've got this on now. Um, you know, John it's going to be hard to... Shanks, from your yeah. good, Jonathan Davis is a surprise for me, actually. You know, now you've uh, mentioned... A bit. No. A bit goody. Um, you know, he, he probably wouldn't have featured too much in the Six Nations had Johnny Williams not got injured in, in the first game against Ireland. Um, form hasn't been that great for um, Sky at the moment because the team hasn't been doing well. But he has been covering 12 and 13, so he's got that versatility. Yeah, I thought I thought he was going to be in um, because of what he's done and because he's a big game player. That's, that's just a given. He performs on the big occasion. So loads of surprises, but you always get it, don't you? There's always surprises out there because, you know, we're not Lions coach. They see something different. Um, but it's exciting. I can't wait now for the games. Yeah, lads, I think it's unbelievable. I think it just shows what rugby can do as well. Everyone who's watched us, we've had over 7,000 at the peak uh, watching us um, laugh and cry. So if you like to that, everyone out there, you can follow and subscribe on YouTube Rugby Pass. Give us a subscribe. You'll see I'm going to be biased, obviously. Uh, GT, great show, chaps. He's going to be biased as well. But just before you go, we'll be showing the Arte Roa Super Rugby competition uh, at the weekend. So you will see the end slate on here. We'll show you how to get involved and subscribe to that. But thank, big, thanks to every, big thanks to everyone. Stevie, Shanks, I can barely talk. Look at me. Hey, Scott, can you believe it? Look at your hoodie as well. All about rugby pass, Goody. Um, we'll take this offline, eh? And we can just talk about eight Scots in the British and Irish Lions. You know, it's 11 English, mate. Oh, we'll we'll get away from that. <laughs> English well, done, Jim. well done, you deserve it, mate. Well done. Mate. Oh, thank you very much. Happy it's not about you. me. It's not about me, but yeah, it's about them. Congrats.